of this family wants you to know Karina Castro, to understand what she went through and help bring her children home. They were taken by social workers after this attack. I hold up. Danielle Gannon met me outside her home in Vallejo today. I'm vaccinated and boosted and everything, so you're safe. I don't know how to do this. I'm so sorry. She invited me to meet her son, Marty Castro, the father of the victim in yesterday's brutal sword attack, Karina Castro. She was an amazing girl. She was an amazing woman, very stubborn, <laughs> determined to raise her daughters on her own. Karina was 27 years old, attended Menlo Atherton High School, got her GED, and worked as a DoorDash driver. She left behind seven-year-old and one-year-old girls. She had the youngest with a man now held for her murder, 33-year-old Jose Rafael Solano Landetta. The family says he goes by the name Rafa Solano and that he didn't work. I found some rap songs he posted on YouTube. He is a diagnosed schizophrenic on meds, and he would use that as an excuse for his behavior. He drank excessively, and you're not supposed to do that on those kind of medications. The family confirms what I learned from law enforcement sources yesterday. The Solano had been violent with Karina, and she got a restraining order against him in April, but continued to interact with him. And if there's somebody out there abusing your daughter, don't, take don't no. let it go. Don't take no for an answer. That's you will I, feel I, responsible, no matter what anyone says. I know. I do too, baby. In the day before the murder, Snapchat messages between the couple got very contentious. I obtained more than a dozen, most with language too explicit to show here. She threatens to tell the world about his rape conviction involving a minor. Rafa calls her snitch lip and warns her, F around and find out. Karina fires back. You want to put a target on my back? Your homie's going to know the real you and threatens to expose his sexual relationship with another man. She adds, dude, go ahead and try and take me out. Just hours later, they had a confrontation in the street outside her apartment, her daughter safely inside. He got really mad, went to the trunk of his car, pulled out whatever it was, and killed her right there behind her car. Stunned neighbors saw it play out. Chappelle Thorborn saw the gruesome aftermath. And the head was underneath the car, and she was laying in the back of the car. Just severed, and then they covered her up. Karina's family told me they learned about the killing yesterday evening through media reports. Her father rushed to the scene and saw the fire department spraying down the blood on the street. When the deputy walked up, he would not confirm who it was, but I said, did she own that black Volkswagen? And he said, yeah, that's her car. That's my daughter. Social workers had already taken the girls. Danielle and Marty want them as soon as possible, but CPS said they'd have to go through the application process. Now I want those girls. That's what I want first. Then I want Rafa to want, fry in jail. I don't I want, care what happens to him. As I left, Marty Castro was in tears, calling the coroner to get his daughter's effects, calling CPS to get his grandchildren back, and calling animal control so he could pick up her dog and two cats. The arraignment for Rafa Solana was scheduled for this afternoon, but has been pushed to Monday. Late today, the family texted me to say that CPS has informed them they will not release the girls to the father and grandmother for at least three to four weeks.